right, so I didn't do a very good job of explaining what the heck I'm doing here with this this garage in, in Chatham. Uh, essentially what happened is I got an email uh, from a gentleman, uh, it was a very short email saying, hey, can you give me a call uh, about uh, about garage products? And uh, I went in the, the office and, and called this gentleman, his, the guy's name's Bob, and and you know said hey what's going on what can i help with and you know occasionally i'll get that where someone will call and say you know hey uh, i'd like to buy a pressure washer how do i do it that sort of thing and so that's what i assumed and so his you know his first question to me was do you do garage design and i thought thought and i said to him i thought for a second i said well i never have i mean i've done my own garages and I've been obsessing over this for you know a good portion of my life but uh, sure I'm sure we could figure something out we could do it he said well I think you need to come up here I think you need to come up and see it now you know a bunch of the questions people had were why you know why would you lease or why would you modify a leased garage you know why would anybody do that and you know that was my question to Bob I said hey do, did you ever think about buying the building he said, "Well, sure. I just, I just don't want to deal with it. You know, it's not, not something that that interests me. I've been leasing this building for 20 years, and uh, and what happened was, there's an identical space just like this set up. Uh, now it it doesn't have the drop ceiling and the and the wallpapered walls and the carpeted floors. It doesn't have any of that stuff. It's more raw." But it's the same size, so it's uh, essentially a mirror image of of this of this garage that you know looks like so. You know, there's a little office with a storage area up up, up top, and then there is uh, the same dimensions, which is roughly 33 or 34 feet wide and 60 roughly 65 feet deep. So you're dealing with about 2,100 square feet of of space, you know, in total. And so we, you know, I flew up there and, and, and started digging into what, what our options are. And so I know this seems simple, but I probably spent, I don't know, 20 hours just working on this, thinking about this, digging into this. So, you know, I don't have it all figured out, but I have a pretty good idea. And, you know, Bob basically said, look, you do it. Uh, but you know, naturally, I'm gonna clear everything with him. I mean, he's gonna be the one buying the stuff, and then we're gonna you know get someone to install it. And and so what I'm working on is the 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 the, the design aspect of it. Um, I, I think uniqueness is important. Um, I'd like to make this a little different than what what is you know what I've traditionally done. Uh, but this is an opportunity for us to test out a lot of new products too. You know, Bob is his whole mo is to obsess over testing new stuff. So let's jump in here. I think I've explained enough what we're doing. Uh, so I'm going to take you through where I'm at in the in the product selection portion. Um, now I haven't shared this with Bob yet, so um, this is more me just talking out loud about what I'm thinking, uh, and then we'll you know we'll chat about exactly what what we're planning. So here's the the structure. So this is the this is the, the the facility. And so you'll notice on the right here is the is the building that we just showed pictures of. Uh, so this is the I guess you could call it, call it the finished side. Uh, and then so we'll call this uh, bay one or side A. Uh, and then side B is the is the unfinished uh, area or the unfinished garage. And notice they're essentially mirror images of each other. And so both of them have this this office area, and so we've talked about, and we'll kind of get into the logistics of this in, in the not too distant future. But there's an office here that we really won't need, uh, and so depending on the labor intensity of it, um, our intention or my intention is to have that room removed. Now, that may change as I get a little further down the discovery phase of, of, of compressed air. You know, we were talking about the, the having that right now there are, there are the lolly columns that you know, so sort of support the building. We're, we've talked about the, the possibility of taking and removing this portion of the wall. We want to remove the wall, and the original thought was 
that I would remove, we would remove this back portion of the wall. But then you know, I got to thinking, I said, you know, that doesn't make as much sense to me. So the thought was we would remove from this column back. Uh, but again, I don't think that makes as much sense as it would make sense to go from this column forward. And so we would be able to, you know, actually create like a, a breezeway or an archway, right? So that you can you can walk through. I want to make it big enough that we could throw a car on on dollies and just roll it over to the other side. Now I know you're going to make the comment saying, "Look, we should have a wall or some sort of separation here because you know this is the display area." But we're not going to be grinding or painting or sanding anything in this area. Uh, this will be the the extent of the work that's going to go on here. Is that we'll you know, Bob will have uh, have somebody replacing the steel bolts for titanium bolts on the bottom of a, of a car to reduce some weight or maybe swapping an axle so we're not going to be doing any any dirt dirty you know really dirty work in here uh, the cars mainly don't leave here so there's not going to be uh, a lot of you know polishing and stuff going on in this in this place um, the only thing to consider is if we do some washing um, that you know I guess some some stuff could 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 transition over to the side we'll have to see you know there are some things like uh like a nano wall where you have a retractable wall that we could put in uh, so, but but again the, the the idea here is to in this garage is to not reinvent the structure right so we're we're more interested so think about this like like my s2000 you know i'm not gutting it and putting a new interior and paint it repainting it i'm just putting some bolt-ons and i'm putting the best bolt-ons possible on it so that's what we're going to do to this this facility is a little bit of modification like taking out this 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 um this office maybe dealing with the drop ceiling and the carpeting later but most of the stuff for this is going to be bolt on so again i don't want to be our, our our goal is not to be chopping out and and rebuilding things it's just to you know we're not going to change the exterior of the building we just want to put cool stuff in the garage it's already a great great place to to hang out so the this side is what we're going to be dealing with first so the new side so essentially what happened is the guy next door has been there for a long long time he's moving out and so bob said look i'll lease the whole building and now we could do some cool stuff here so this will be we'll call this the working side and then this will be the display side and so any cabinets or anything that are on this side are going to go over and be be transitioned into the new the new area this this room has a ceiling it's roughly 14 feet i only got to spend a minute or so in there uh we didn't the bob didn't have the keys yet for it but there are there are some some i beams that run across from left to right and then you know again the general structure is uh is 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 open other than the office you know what i'd like to do in here is to do flooring cabinets across the back wall we need to do ample lighting uh, and then the intent is to is to have uh, uh, some sort of washing area again there's not going to be a lot of washing going on here so i i don't think we need to do a lot of or put a lot of effort into uh, significant drainage uh, i know we, we bob and i've talked about maybe putting in a french drain of some sort uh, we don't want to have to pull a bunch of permits to do this stuff because, uh, again, we don't want to do some major reconstruction of the building. I think that if we did a washing area and maybe there's a one car a, a month washed, that I don't. Th I think all you'd really have to do is open the door up and let it open for a little while, and I think it'll be fine. Um, maybe I'm completely wrong. Again, we have a 4,000 square foot facility. Uh, this doesn't look like a lot of distance, but uh, I don't think we're going to have a lot of overspray. Uh, I also don't think, again, we're going to have to deal with a lot of water issues. Uh, but but we'll you know we'll, we'll think that through a little bit more. But but we're going to do washing in here as well. I, I think the 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 washing portion or the washing products will be almost you know kind of more of a, a a show piece than anything and then again the ability to 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 spray off a car if needed uh so you know as i'm talking out loud my, my guess is this wall would have to come out first then we would paint uh and then we would do lights and then we would do flooring so if we're heading down that path let's talk about lights real quickly 
somebody shared this in the Facebook group not too long ago uh, about this company, Prime Lights. I'm guessing they just did some Google searching or maybe they're from Austin. I, I called them up and said, hey, what's the story? Mainly I was interested in getting uh, these high bay lights, these what's called what they call stingray lights. Uh, I was interested in getting them in 6500 Calvin and if that was an option. It is an option. Uh, we'll we'll cross that bridge at some point. I don't think Bob is going to like 6500K. Again, he's not going to be doing a ton of detailing in here. Uh, so I'm going to err on the side of caution and make a recommendation that we do the standard 5000K. Here's, here's your standard lighting. You know, an incandescent light bulbs are usually 2700 Calvin. Uh, and, and so you're in that yellow or orange range. You know, 4,000 K is what most garages, they'll either have like 3,500 or 4,000. Some I've seen some 3,200 as well. So a normal garage will have, you know, around 4,000. Uh, 5,000 is going to be closer to, you know, to what the sun looks like as it's, you know, as it's, as it's setting. Uh, and then 6,500 is going to be what you would have on like a cloudless day. And so, but you notice you're headed toward the blue scale of things, right? So you're headed for a bluer looking light. I, I prefer a bluer looking light, but it takes some getting used to, right? Uh, here's a little bit but more accurate as you kind of work your way up the scale. You know, the light appears blue. So if you put a 2700 Calvin bulb next to a 6500K light, it's going to look a little odd. Once you get the entire structure lit up that way, I, th I think it's fantastic. But anyway, we don't have in existence, we don't have a 6500 Calvin LED solution yet. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna chase that dream. But for now, and, and again, for this particular application, I don't think we're making sacrifices. I, I think that, that 5,000 makes sense. So now we have the discussion of do we do something like this, the, the bolt, which would be a, a traditional shop light, or do we do a high bay fixture? Because again, we're dealing with, you know, we're dealing with 12, 13, 14 foot ceilings. High bay would generally be regarded, I think it, I think that, I don't know what the standard definition is, but it's probably somewhere north of 15 feet, you know, 15, 20, 25 feet uh, would, be, would be a normal application for a high bay fixture. And you'll notice, you know, the reason why these are classified as high bay is because of, or why they're used in the high bay applications, they have a reflector, you know, behind the light. So that, that reflector is going to, is going to disperse light in a certain pattern. Uh, but notice you can use a high bay fixture in a non high bay application. You know, this is this, I think this facility I talked to him has, uh, has 11 foot ceilings. If you're going to use a high bay fixture in order to not get hot spotting, you just have to do more of them, right? So notice this giant facility only has a few lights with, you know, say 15 or 20 foot ceilings. There's only one, two, three, four, you know, there's like eight lights in this giant facility. Whereas this room has, you know, has considerably more one, two, three, four, and then notice one, two, three, four banks of lights. Uh, so significantly more light in this area that has lower ceilings than a place that's higher. And just to put it into perspective, this, this picture here looks a lot like what this facility looks like. So, so again, you can use a high bay fixture. We can use one of these fixtures in a lower bay situation. You just have to use more lights. So let's pull up, uh, let's pull up the schematic here from the, that they sent me. So let's go back to products. Let's go to prime lights. And so here is what we're intending. I'm again, I'm not a lighting expert, but I know a little bit, uh, in general, if you, you know, in, in, a, in a garage, you know, generally you're going to have, you know, 50, 50 foot candles of light in a normal, you know, residential garage. Uh, you know, 75 to 80 would be recommended. Uh, we're going to go over and above that. We want more light. Uh, and so we're going to do 15 fixtures, you know, spaced roughly six feet apart uh, or 12 feet on center uh, from light to light. We're going to do it rather symmetrically in the building. Uh, so we'll have five rows of three lights, which will give us nice e even dispersion. But rather than doing uh, six bulb or, or eight bulb fixtures, we're going to do these four bulb fixtures. And then you'll notice if we go back, there are two options. So there's the Stingray 4 Frosted and the Stingray 4 Clear. 
uh, and my discussions with Prime Lights is if you want to see the LED strips, then you would do this. It's a little brighter, a little hotter. Uh, and, and so for our application, since again, we're using a high bay light in a not high bay area, then, then we're going to want the frosted option. It'll give you a little softer looking light. Uh, so I'm really interested in these. Uh, I know a few guys in the Obsessed Garage group have bought them uh, and, and are in transit. So we're going to figure out how these work. I'm also interested in how it works with, uh, with me on camera. So I'm probably going to get some of these and replace the fixtures in my, in my wash bay room and just kind of play with it and see, see from there. Uh, these fixtures also, I haven't seen them in person, but you know, they look like the standard fixture, but hopefully they're a little bit higher quality. Uh, and, and there isn't a custom install solution, you know, to, to mount them in the ceiling, but, uh, but clearly it can be done. You know, if you'll notice this, this facility here has them, you know, has them recessed into the drywall. So I'm sure we could figure out some sort of solution in the future on how to make them. So that's lighting. Now remember, we're dealing with this side first, and then once this side is done, we can move all the cars over here and then do this side, right? So that, that's the intention. So that's, that's, that's lighting. So again, we would cut walls out, whatever we're going to chop out, then do lighting, then do flooring. What happens when the when the force pulls you back? Your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor. The 